you're in a game, you're on key highlights, you maybe have a couple of seconds to figure out what the AI is doing. So where do you start? Well, today we begin a series of shows called Unbalancing the Opposition. I will share the strategies I use, which aren't just unique to me, because in certain cases, you will find real teams using them as well. So if you're interested, buckle up. We're going to focus on unbalancing the 4 to 4 My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. This is the channel where I do football manager content. I also stream three times a week. And if you haven't popped in to say hello, then yes, I'm a bit hurt. Uh, on Wednesdays, I do bring your tactics. I try and cover as many tactics as possible within a two-hour window. And if I have the time, then yes, we will open it up to the to everybody else. And uh, please, please, please bring your tactics or even ask me questions. I'll try my best to help. We usually play through a few matches with uh, the tactics and then we will look for options. I will never, ever outright say that a tactic cannot be used. But I will always play the tactic out at the start to show you what's happening. And then as the game evolves, we start making changes. And hopefully in some cases, we come back from a goal down or in other cases, we just, you know, score more goals. On Fridays, we do my journeyman challenge. Yes, that's a chance where I, you know, delve into one of my long-term saves. And this time around in my long-term saves, yes, we are going entirely strikeless. And yes, we also do draft modes, Tuesdays and um, Thursdays. So when do I sleep? Okay, let's just forget sleep for a moment. Because too often I have sleepless nights thinking about what content can help you guys out. And yes, this came to me while I was sleeping as well. Uh, unbalancing the AI is actually not that hard, but I often get a question about how do you play against a 4-2-4? How do you play against a 4-2-3-1? How do you, you know, how do you uh, play against these back three formations? And after all the questions I was getting, I've decided, well, we'll start a series and we will talk about each of these formations in turn. And if that's the kind of thing that you like, then please, please keep watching. Whenever we build tactics, we're after some kind of balance. We want our attacks to be seamless. Whether you're the soak and hit kind of manager or whether you want to press and camp, there are always going to be certain transitions that you're looking out for. And, well, once you've seen those transitions, you know you've kind of nailed the balance, you know, smack on the money. So you know that your system is looking good. Your tactic could have been working perfectly, right? And then all of a sudden you come across this team and you start thinking to yourself, oh my God, the AI has sussed me out. Oh God, it's far. do I need to change my tactic? What has gone wrong? The thing is, there are certain things that you want to first check before you think that the AI has sussed you out. It, sometimes it's just dumb luck on the part of the AI. More often than not, you'll just encounter the AI on a good day with a good tactic or sometimes on a bad day with a horrific tactic like this one, this 442 that the AI threw at me on a recent Bring Your Tactics stream where you get a chance to bring your tactics. The AI was using this tactic, which honest to goodness is the worst 442 I've seen in my entire life. It was so bad, I decided to go to the next match and use that match to test your tactics out because my son, my son can design a tactic to beat this. So let's start with something really simple. We go with a 424. The first thing we want to do is we need to understand our own formations, strengths and weaknesses. We need to understand what can counter our formation. What we also need to know during a game is whether the opposition is playing a defensive or an attacking formation. You need to look for telltale clues on how a system is being played. Is it playing the ball on the ground or through space? Is it defensive or attacking? Is it using fullbacks or wingbacks? Where are the battles happening? Otherwise, you could be the subject of unbalancing, which is what happened to me against Ali from Wasted Possession. In the match against Ali, I failed to recognize any of the patterns. Typically, I'm confident with my 3 4 one 2 since I try to control the center of the pitch. However, he used the center of the pitch to disrupt play, instead focusing his attacks down the flanks, leveraging off his conservative use of fullbacks and couple that with some very fast players on the wings. 
Each time play broke down, he played it back onto the flanks to take advantage of his speedy wingers, and I got undone time and time again. While this isn't a typical way an AI would play a 4 2 4, we need to learn to see patterns. Here, I would have been better off coming off the system and playing something different. He had faster wingers, he had a strong target man like Andy Carroll kind of target man in front, and he had a simple poacher. All he needed to do was wait for me to come forward, boom, the ball went over the top, and I was done for because I failed to spot this within the first few minutes of the game. Because if the, the back line plays pretty far away from their goal, then it's a relatively attacking 4 2 4. Then we look at the wing backs. Are they using wing backs or are they using full backs? If they're using wing backs, then there's a chance that they might be pushing up the pitch. But you want to be very careful with this because you want to know whether those wing backs are on defense duty, auto, or attacking. Because if those wing backs are anything more than support or at least support and they're playing on a positive mentality, those wing backs might end up pushing into your half the moment they get the ball. And that's when you know the 4 2 4 is more attacking. But if the 4 2 4 plays with those wing backs held back, you don't see them foraging into your half, then that 4 2 4 is a lot more conservative. It might look, be looking for faster transitions. It could be playing direct. Pay attention to the roles and duties in front. Are they using target men? Are they using an advance forward? These are telltale roles that this is a counter-attacking system. Then finally, look at all the, the distribution of roles in the team. Are they playing with a ball-playing defender at the back? Are they playing with a no-nonsense central defender? Then that's like a big clue that they're looking to hoof the ball up from the back. So... Paying attention to the roles and duties of the opposite formation is very important if you want to try and unbalance the system. When you look at the strikers, you want to pay attention to things like acceleration, jumping reach, because this can be a clue as to how the 4 to 4 might be working. If the strikers have very good acceleration, then this is the team that's looking to play on the break, is trying to get behind your lines, put pressure on your defenders, force them back and if they have good jumping reach then you might be dealing with a lot of crosses so you want, you want to be worried about the two strikers right they're two in front one could have very good jumping reach and the other one could be like Michael Owen speeding off you know off a very good target man so the question then becomes you know what do you do when you're faced with a formation that's got Romelu Lukaku inside there who's got great jumping reach and good acceleration, then, well, you're kind of in some trouble and that's when your formation that's playing against that formation, it, you might be better served in making a quick change to your formation by deploying a defensive midfielder to give your defender some time to protect the back line. And here, we're looking at certain roles like an anchor man or a defensive midfielder who are going to be closer to your back line, right? So when the ball comes, you have a player that's not too far away from your back line. The moment you start playing with a ball-winning midfielder or a halfback, now, while these roles are good, you need a really good halfback who knows what he's doing, like an Angolo Conte kind of halfback who's got very good decision-making. But then you need a tall player as well. Because if you play with a short halfback, he's not going to win headers against Romelu Lukaku. He might lose the ball, right? So he, he, he might not jump in the air. He needs the ball to come down before he can make a tackle. So you're going to be very careful about the, the players that you select for the um, DM position. So how you unbalance the 4 2 4 will largely depend on the players at your disposal now. Because if your team has got fantastic jumping reach and they're also very fast, then you can handle certain kinds of strikers. But if your team isn't good enough, if your boys haven't got very good jumping reach, then perhaps you might be thinking about morphing your tactic into something a bit more conservative, where you might be using a DM, a back three, and maybe two wing backs. That way, those wingers that are coming down the flanks, they've got wing backs that can check them. Those two strikers have to contend with four in, four in front of them and that can be a very solid counter-attacking system where you're just soaking in pressure and then up front, you have a target man and a poacher. 
Because then what you are doing is you're playing with a counter-attacking system, drawing in the 424 and hitting one over the top. Here, you're unbalancing the 424 by soaking in the pressure and hitting them on the break. There are, of course, other strategies as well. One of them is starving the two central midfielders of a 424 of the ball. So what you're doing, trying to do here is you're trying to deny them service. There are two ways you can deny them service. First, you go to war with the 424 with your own two central midfielders who can put apply who can apply a lot of pressure. Here you gotta win by having the better players. Another strategy, of course, is what we call mimicking, where you play a system that is the same like a 424, but you're just mimicking the 424's players and their positions, perhaps with a 442 or a 442 DM. Then you've got players in, ident in identical positions to a 424, and then you're applying pressure on those care uh, those players in those positions. Finally, you can staff a 424 of service by playing formations that put pressure in certain vulnerable areas of a 424. For example, you could play a box system in midfield where you try to box in the central midfielders and deny them service. This can be done with several formations like a 4222 DM, which is like the Brazilian magic box. Or you could play a 3412, which has got wide midfielders putting pressure on their fullback so that they can't work the ball out out from the back, you have an AM sitting in front of their defenders, forcing them to go long towards the wingers, taking a chance that they can put the ball out. Here then, in your 3-4-1-2, you've got to start thinking about, mm, this could be a more risky way of playing. I like this version the best because it's, it's the most riskiest and it's the most exciting to watch. Those are some of the simple strategies you can use to unbalance a 4-2-4. Four, four. Now, I am planning to turn this into a series where I'll be focusing on other tactics like a 4-2-3-1, perhaps a 4-4-2, a 4-5-1. Naturally, there's no such thing as one way for a formation to play. You just need to be able to identify how that specific formation is trying to control the pitch, how it's trying to create goal scoring opportunities. You need to identify that first. Like, Taking a simple approach like whether it's defensive or attacking, whether it's focusing play down the flanks or whether it's focusing they play down through the middle. These are important things that you have to look at during a game before you come up with a strategy to unbalance the AI. If you like today's show, please hit the um, like button in the bottom because it helps with the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm. And um, I also want to know what kind of formations you're looking at. Are there any specific formations that you've struggled with unbalancing? He's, uh, well, I guess the AI is a pretty straightforward way of approaching it. But against humans, it's not just, it's not the same. Because the AI, well, it's got game A, plan A, and plan B, and it's usually never consistent, right? But the human is a different story altogether. And it's much more fascinating to play against people. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and found it useful. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Once again, please stay safe and healthy. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your continuing support. You guys, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.